Welcome to the Merchant's Way. Uh, now, we are continuing on, uh, as you see, we're in the painted chamber still. Now, yes, wall paintings. We were talking about, and we do jump about a bit, and I'm sure you understand that, because like I say, we're not at school. It's uh, using examples where we find it necessary. So, um, yes, in churches, we um, basically got to a point where um, we're now seeing, as we lead into the Reformation from Edward VI, no craven images, things are becoming whitewashed over. Now, <clears throat> you know, we, um, that sort of obliterated things. Now, people say most of where today wall paintings, and incidentally, we are still finding wall paintings today in churches, in houses, in build various buildings where someone, a piece of plaster has fallen off and suddenly they think, oh my God, these are the best things we've seen thus far. Uh, now, we are seeing a concentration. Now, I, I, I'm fully aware that there are people viewing these that um, might, not, might not have been to England, and you might not know the geography of the country. But what we're seeing is around the southeast. Uh, we, we have counties. I'm sure you know about our counties. There's Essex, Sussex, Berkshire... Hertfordshire, Buckinghamshire, those are the southern sort of home counties. We're finding more, or more has been found in those areas. Now, it's not that we didn't have them in the north, but what we, what we think is, in those areas, it's less likely to find stone buildings you're finding more, uh, say, Norfolk and Suffolk, more flint and sort of rubble. So naturally, there was a lovely surface that went on within the interior. And then the paintings went on top. So though there were, if, though there were and also timber-built frames, half-timbered buildings. So if they were whitewashed over, it's more likely that, yes, at some point they can be found. Now, in the Midlands, moving up to the north, or a building like this, Ellis Manor House, our walls are nearly three, three and a half feet thick. So this is beautiful stone. Now, those buildings where they didn't hack off plasters because it's rubble, you're likely to find wall paintings. But in these buildings, a building like this with massive stone walls and so forth, a lot of people naturally assumed that um, because the stone was so pleasing, within the Victorian time, a lot of people did something that was so foolish they literally rip the plaster from the wall. And I know I've, I have addressed this with you, but you know, we're going to get people visiting us for the first time. And for those who have been on board with us, then you may have forgotten and it's reminding you. So what happened is people hacked off plaster from the wall, wanting to show the beautiful stone on the inside, thinking, yes, medieval house, nice. They're misled, completely misled. You did not. As I said, it's a skeleton. It was beautifully plastered. And as a matter of fact, even here in this house downstairs, we've got some wonderfully large fireplaces and they've taken the plaster off. And what you see on the stone are heavy scarification. They're actually key for plastering. 
By that, what I mean for people who don't live in these, you might not be used to the language being used. When you plaster, you, 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 you need uh, not a smooth surface, but a pitted surface. So those clarification give tooth for holding the plaster on it. So that if you visited us, or I should say when you visit us, you will notice on our fireplaces the bresima. It's what people call a lintel. It's the correct name, the bresima. Very heavy scarification. Next door, actually, and I do look forward to sharing this with you next door at some stage. We've got an enormous, a beautiful, enormous hooded, stone hooded fireplace. And we do know that that was completely painted. But again, the hideots have hacked off the plaster on the lower section. But we had some work done because I cannot believe what they actually did. They cemented some of the, the beautiful stonework. So what we've done, we had some specialists in, and um, it might not mean anything to you, but nonetheless, I want people to know about these people. Weldon Stone, absolutely brilliant craftsmen. They came, and what they did, and also very worrying, and I've digressed a bit, but you know, bear with me because this is still pertinent to the wall paintings. We had slight movement on this massive um, fireplace, which we will show to you at some point, and they skillfully took off the cement that had cracked. And they inserted stainless steel and pinned it back to the wall. And then they've now mixed lime putty plaster, which is how it should have been done originally. But you see, this is all expense. People brutalizing this sort of thing, unless you get people and it's not because I can afford it, I promise you. This is a passion. And it's doing the right thing. You know, I am privileged enough to be spending time in this building. The least I can do is learn about the building and make sure that absolutely everything I do to pass it on to the next generation is right. I would rather not do certain things if it's not obviously going to be dangerous to us. I would rather leave it than muck it up. So I do feel that responsibility. Now, above this enormous hooded fireplace, after they'd finished the work, or rather when we were trying to ascertain the color of the plaster, the lime putty plaster they'd mixed to go onto it. We cleaned the section because you can imagine over so many hundreds of years, it's filthy dirty. So having delicately cleaned this, because you always have to be careful, you don't know where painting's going to be. And you know, we found at the very top, the banderole. And the band roll, you won't see it on here because, of, but you just see the bottom section. We have shown it to you. We will point out an insert actually still runs around the top of this fireplace, but it's filthy dirty and needs cleaning. When we next have um, our two conservators here, Bianca Madden and uh, Claudia Fiocetti, we can have a look at that and see what's surprise we have. So thank you my friends um, for being with us on our voyage this week and um, we'll see you on the next voyage. Good sailing. Bye now. <music>